Hello, and welcome to another Encore Movie Break. I'm Leonard Maltin. Some films are like fast food, quickly digested and just as quickly forgotten. Other films are more like a feast, and they leave a lasting impression. Encore has three such films on its schedule for April, and they're all worth discussing. First up, Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket. You may have heard some of the hubbub surrounding Kubrick's latest film with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman, Eyes Wide Shut. Well, it was no different on Full Metal Jacket. Endless months of shooting and then post-production with no real indication of what the film would be about. When it finally emerged, we all knew it would be unique, as every Kubrick film has been, from the killing and paths of glory right up through 2001, A Space Odyssey and Barry Lyndon. In this case, the writer-director set his sights on Vietnam, dividing his film into two parts. First, the rigors and sometimes horrors of basic training, and second, the combat itself. It's the first half that impressed viewers and critics the most, in part because of his inspired casting of real-life former drill sergeant R. Lee Ermey as the career man who drives some of his green recruits over the edge. I don't think I'll ever forget him, or young Vincent D'Onofrio as his most vulnerable soldier. Now you listen to me, Private Pyle, and you listen good. I want that weapon, and I want it now. The producers of TV's Olympics coverage long ago learned that as dramatic as competition can be, the background stories of the athletes themselves are often just as compelling, sometimes even more so. That's borne out in the Oscar-winning British movie Chariots of Fire, which tells the story of two men who ran in the 1924 Olympics, a devout Scottish missionary, Eric Liddell, played by Ian Charlson, and a driven Jewish student from Cambridge University, Harold Abrams, played by Ben Cross. Director Hugh Hudson, making his feature debut and working from Colin Welland's script, knew that these contrasting lives were the stuff of great drama, but he also understood the use of restraint. In fact, the suppression of emotions is largely what this film is about. My favorite moment involves the track coach, played so well by Ian Holm. But if you haven't seen the film, I don't want to give that moment away. Let's just say he has an unusual way of expressing elation. And all this human drama is played out against the excellent electronic music score by Vangelis, which won an Oscar, along with the director, the writer, and the costumer for Chariots of Fire. I can run fast. With your help, I think I can run even faster. Perhaps faster than any man ever ran. I want that Olympic medal. Can't see a race today. See someone win. But I want you to do more than just watch a race. I want you to take part in it. I want to compare faith to running in a race. Steven Spielberg is no stranger to big subjects, but when he chose to make Empire of the Sun, he faced a particular challenge to recreate the look and feel of Shanghai in the late 1930s as well as the prisoner camps where so much of the subsequent story of J.G. Ballard's autobiographical novel takes place. He also had to take a young actor, Christian Bale, and lead him through the drama of this piece as a kind of representative for us in the audience. It's his story, the incredible saga of a British boy of privilege who goes through a living hell in the early days of World War II, and it's mostly seen through his eyes. Learned new words today. Atomball. It was like a white light in the sky. Like God taking a photograph. Movies painted on a big canvas, now playing in your home. I'm Leonard Malton, and I'll have more on the next movie break here on Encore, the movies of your life.